All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature 235, The Law of Natural Healing. This is a work on suggestion, like hypnotism within a therapeutic context. 132 pages, so it is intermediate in length. Link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. I do have other works available on like mesmerism, hypnotism, and also sort of the alternative medicine angle, mostly under the herbal header and some under the academic header. Uh, this is an interesting work. Some of the therapeutic usages of suggestion that it makes are still in use today. Uh, for instance, quitting smoking, quitting drinking, or, or preventing uh, addiction in general, opiates, laudanum being mentioned, of course, um, trauma, sort of psychological stress-related uh, things, things that are more mental and behavioral. Hypnotism is still used by some people within a totally mainstream context today in order to accomplish these medical goals. It's not as common as it used to be, and we understand that not everyone can be hypnotized, not everyone is prone to suggestion, but insofar as it, it does exist, it can work. It is able, in some cases, to operate in a medical context. It can give people symptom relief. It can give people treatment. That being said, it also contains a lot of, a lot of claims that are false. And at the time, they were, they were novel. And so people would go on saying, oh, yeah, I can hypnotize you. I can cure you. Basically anything under the sun. So two things that it mentions in particular that I find hilarious, lead poisoning, drop wrist, uh, muscle weakness resulting from lead exposure, it claims an anecdote of having successfully cured this. Now, what it really means is, of course, the person has gotten this disease. You hypnotize them. Oh, you're all better. Don't worry. Send them home to rest. They're no longer being exposed chronically to lead. It works its way out of their system. And the damage, I guess, in their case wasn't irreversible. And so they start feeling fine. They think, oh, my goodness, suggestion works. Oh, thank you, doc. Here's five dollars. Should have been a lot back then. Uh, this sort of thing could happen. It's confirmation bias. Uh, and the other one is goiter. Uh, goiter, it's a swelling around the neck of, the, I believe, the thyroid from iodine deficiency. Um, basically, a change in diet would have been the proper thing to do. You know, here, you need iodine supplements. Well, if the person changed their diet, was getting more iodine seasonally, or they changed you know, where they were living, they got used to a different diet or something, that would be the actual cause. Mesmerism, of course, taking the credit thereof. Hypnotism, rather. Now, hypnotists don't like it if you call them mesmerists, but it's like within common parlance, there's kind of similar terms. To mesmerize, to hypnotize, to conduct auto-suggestion, whatever. Self-hypnosis is mentioned here. Uh, it is possible. Uh, keeping in mind, of course, again, only like, what is it, 20 or 30 percent of the population is particularly prone to being hypnotized. And then there's another third or so that can be, but it's harder. And then there are some people where, largely, their mentality just doesn't sync up. You're not going to be able to utilize suggestion on them. Sometimes people accidentally, I guess this is actually true, people practicing hypnotism in like a mirror can actually hypnotize themselves. And they'll pretty much just stand there immobilized in a trance state until they're like, you know, cold water's poured on their face or someone snaps their fingers. I guess it's actually possible to do. Never accomplish that. Then suck. Imagine you just sort of stand there in the mirror for like five fucking hours and then finally some, so, someone on TV snaps their fingers and you snap out of it. You're like, what the fuck happened? And you're like, oh shit, you have to go see the doctor. You think you're having blackouts and it's just because you mesmerized yourself. And how funny that would be. By the way, you can hypnotize a chicken by holding its head to the ground and then drawing a line straight out from its beak really quick. And you can hypnotize a cat by clamping the back of its neck. It's a response to uh, the same. You know how you can scruff a cat, like it has a scruff in the back? Mommy cat would pick the kitty up. And I guess the idea is the biological response keeps it from being injured so it won't, like, you know, twist around or something while it's being, like, carried. I, I used to think it was because of nerve pinching. Apparently, it's a parasympath parasympathetic sorry, response. Uh, actually to uh, mommy's mouth clamped around the scruff or something. Something like that. I know I'm getting off on a bit of a tangent, but these are interesting sort of uh, medical things. It's a very good work. Um, again, keeping in mind, while it's talking about hypnotism and stuff, and that's still useful, you can hypnotize people. It can be used in modern medicine. Some of the claims it makes, just see them for what they are, interesting medical history. Uh, so you've got this period from the 1890s, especially through like the 1920s, 
where you've got a very rational approach to irrational topics. And so you've got a lot of people who come in as opportunists and make weird sweeping claims about otherwise mundane phenomena. So you've got hypnotism, which can be useful, but then you've got people offering to hypnotize you to cure your hangnail. And clearly it doesn't work, it can't work physically, but people made fortunes off of it. You got like, you know, the Duffy's Elixir sort of era of medicine. You've got all of these different herbal concoctions and apothecary and saying, oh, take Atlas powder, it'll double your weight. And so, by the way, people used to take like uh, 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 lipid pills back then to make themselves fatter. It's funny because that was considered, because the average person wasn't health, wasn't uh, rich enough to afford enough food to get like fat, it was considered uh, good if a woman became like voluptuous by which we mean slightly overweight by modern standards that was considered like really attractive and sexy like like it would help her be more fertile as well i guess was the idea i would say if someone's like really chronically undernourished i can stop having the period so maybe there's some truth to it i don't know uh but <laughs> it's really really funny times uh but you can see there's um a dream oracle actually that i'm editing right now i've got it formatted uh, and they've got like five pages of ads for this like Atlas compound stuff. And I guess the idea is it builds muscle and mass and stuff like that. But anyway, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Highly recommended. If you're interested in the history of medicine sort of side of the quasi occult, or if you're interested in hypnotism as a subject, definitely check it out. Second and third links to my books, blogs, you can get other things as well there. That's about all. Peace out.